Close to the horizons of the solar system, there exists a body hemmed in by icy rocks. This little world belonging to the Kuiper Belt has always fascinated us through its complex and mysterious structure, making it an astronomical masterpiece. The more we learn about this ball of ice, the more stranded we seem to be. This frozen entity dissipates into the confines of the solar system, and we know it as Pluto, the dwarf planet. Pluto. Pluto has always earned the spotlight in the world of astronomy since its discovery in 1930. Here, NASA has brought home some images of Pluto, along with some mind-boggling revelations and discoveries that you would never want to miss out on. So stay tuned till the end of this video as we reveal the unknown. First, let us learn about Pluto. To start with, Pluto is about 40 astronomical units away from the Sun, which makes up a distance of 3.7 billion miles. Sure, that's a long way to go. When it comes to the orbit, it is quite evident that it has a rather elongated orbit around the centre of the solar system. Did you know that it takes Pluto 248 Earth years to complete an orbit around the solar system? Pluto has a radius of 1,148 kilometers, and Russia, believe it or not, has a much larger surface area than Pluto. Pluto is known to be a very distant and dim celestial body, making it impossible for viewers on Earth to see Pluto with the naked eye. Forget the naked eye. Even with the images taken from the so-called Hubble Space Telescope, Pluto resembles a murky brown disk with no indication of surface details. It sounds like that's a pity. New Horizons It was these conditions that almost made it impossible for researchers to study Pluto, and this hurdle gave rise to the New Horizons. So, what were the New Horizons? This was an unmanned orbital station sent to Pluto long ago by NASA in 2006. I gotta say, it took quite some time to reach its destination. Yes, a period of nine and a half years. I've got to admit that it was worth the time, as it made around 400 observations and collected more than six gigabytes of information. Pluto's model. To learn about Pluto, one has to understand its model. So without further ado, let us see above and beyond the planetoid Pluto. Pluto has a massive core, which has a diameter of about 1,700 kilometers, and is made up of a mixture of several types of water, ice, and rocks. When it comes to the mantle, it is made up of 300 kilometers of ice. Pluto's crust is a mixture of crystallized gases such as nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Tombaugh Regio. As we're now familiar with Pluto's model, we can now move into the discoveries made by NASA from its latest photographs. We can now begin our expedition with one of Pluto's outstanding relief features. Here we present the Tombaugh Regio. The Tombaugh Regio, a vast area located in the equatorial zone of Pluto, is shaped just like a heart. It is this shape that gives the region its popular nickname, the heart. Unlike other planets, Pluto does have a heart. This plane surprisingly occupies almost a quarter of Pluto's entire area. Sputnik Planitia This surface is not homogeneous, and so there is a smooth plane in its west, which is known as Sputnik Planitia. The diameter of Sputnik Planitia measures about 1,492 kilometers. This region is covered with a thick layer of nitrogen ice, carbon monoxide, and yes, solid methane. It is to be noted that these substances are known to have a light colouring, which makes certain parts of this plane reflect up to 90% of the light that is falling on them. Quite surprising, isn't it? When we analyse this place geologically, there are virtually no craters, and thus the region is young. Though geologically the region is young, Sputnik Planitia is estimated to have formed about 100 million years ago, when Pluto experienced a collision with a larger celestial body. Collision. Pluto's glorious history dates back billions of years. Don't you want to hear about it? When Pluto experienced the collision, a large crater appeared, and it was filled with the contents of the hypothetical ocean that froze rapidly. NASA has come up with some evidence of this where, for example, there are some smooth surface areas ranging from 20 to 30 kilometers, with both hills and depressions concentrated on the borders between them. 
This type of structure implies the existence of convection cells, which appear in any kind of fluid heated from below. This can serve as indirect evidence that proves the hypothesis of Pluto's warm interior. Maculas. Now it's time for us to move a little further south, where we can see a deep basin, and here lies what is assumed to be the vent of a cryovolcano. The rocks around it are assumed to be frozen eruptions, whose chemical composition could be used to reveal the peculiarities of Pluto's inner body. When we move further east along the equator, we get to see the maculas, which are a chain of dark spots named after dark deities of various cultures. These spots are known to have diameters of hundreds of kilometers. The maculas together form a giant structure known as the brass knuckles. Isn't that a devious name? The largest dark spot on Pluto measures around 3,000 kilometers and is called the Cthulhu macula. Lowell Regio. Now it's time for us to head north, and here lies Lowell Regio, which is the vast valley that surrounds Pluto's very own North Pole. Lowell Regio is an important landmark on Pluto, as this region is one of the most illuminated parts of its surface. Pluto has a very large tilt when it comes to its axis of rotation with respect to the plane of its orbit. In Pluto's movement, it finds its North Pole facing the Sun, and it's assumed that due to this, the density of Pluto's atmosphere has tripled over the last 30 years. Charon Not so far from Pluto exists a large satellite called Charon, and here's an interesting companionship between both of the celestial bodies. Pluto constantly performs cyclic oscillations near a certain point. Why do you think such a phenomenon happens? This is because of the presence of Charon, which affects Pluto gravitationally. The mass of Charon is more than 11% of the mass of Pluto itself. Sounds too much for a satellite, doesn't it? Vulcan Planum When it comes to Charon, several curious terrain features can be found on its visible surface. To begin with, there is a vast region known as the Vulcan Planum, to the south of the equator. The area of this region is not known precisely, but it is not less than about 400,000 square kilometers. Isn't that impressive? Here's a fun fact. An area like that would be the size of an average European country. Kubrick Mons. The highest summit of Sharon can also be found here, and it is known as Kubrick Mons. Its diameter measures about 40 kilometers, and as per some estimates, its height reaches 4,000 meters. The mountain is also surrounded by a wide circular moat, estimated to be about two kilometers deep. Some assumptions imply that Kubrick Mons might be a cryovolcano. Isn't there always room for suspicion? What do you think? It is also to be noted that the area around it has likely sunk under its weight. Oz Terra. As we move into the north, we can see the vast stretches of Oz Terra. The surface consists of a plenitude of craters, and it is separated from the Vulcan Planum by a complex system of giant ledges and crevices. These have a total height of about one kilometer, and the largest among them is Serenity Chasma, which has a length of 200 kilometers and a width varying from 40 to 50 kilometers. Mordor Macula. When we move further north, quite close to the pole, we get to see the Mordor Macula. It has a diameter that reaches 475 kilometers. The origin of Mordor Macula is quite debatable, though there is a dominant hypothesis. Don't you want to know what that is? The dominant hypothesis today tells us that the nitrogen and methane floating from Pluto's atmosphere were trapped by Charon's gravity and settled at the poles after exposure to ultraviolet radiation. They evolved into tholins and gradually became concentrated in the celestial body's ice. Though this hypothesis sounds relevant, it is yet to be proved. The Pluto-Charon system is indeed one of the most fascinating structures in the solar system. Unfortunately, the New Horizons probe had left the environs quite long ago. What's disheartening is that the celestial bodies are moving away from us swiftly, taking away the mysteries that dwell within them. Right now, the probe is more than 50 astronomical units away from Earth, and it beams back to us from time to time. Now that we have reached the conclusion of today's video, what do you think about NASA's discoveries on Pluto? 
I hope you liked today's video, and we will meet you all again. Until then, goodbye, fellas. <laughs>